Here is something that doesn't sound dramatic at first, but I think it's one of the most important EV stories this month, probably this year actually. It will sort of make sense probably about halfway through. Until then, we'll have to explain the context and get to it. But BYD has just teamed up with Huawei to link cars and homes and wearable devices and smart devices like our phones and watches and things like that all together through a system that they've created called Harmony OS. And before you switch off thinking this is just another software partnership, it's this is so different. This is so not. So hear me out because this is uh, this is much bigger than Apple CarPlay or Alexa or Siri or Android Auto. This is about how or who controls the entire ecosystem around your uh, car, basically, because your car is nice. They want your car to fit into a sort of a digital ecosystem of some sort. Hey folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. Happy Christmas. I hope you are having a lovely time. Also, thank you to these people who have bought me lots of eggnog. Uh, this Christmas. This one is uh, an interesting story because it's very easy to skim past, but it's super significant. And so that's why people don't know about it. But you need to kind of know about it. So when you actually read what they're doing, you realise it's a pretty big shift in how EVs are going to fit into our daily lives and connect into a sort of ecosystem, which you probably don't even know about, especially in China and eventually everywhere else too, probably in 10, 10 years time, you will be definitely know, knowing, knowing about it. So here is what's actually happened. BYD has applied to join something called the Global Intelligent Internet of Things Alliance. Just so you know, an incredibly large and important uh, alliance, even though it's got a silly name. It's abbreviated as the GIIC. It's basically a standards body that Huawei has uh, helped set up around Harmony OS. And that alliance has already got 350 of some of the world's largest and most significant companies in and uh, in it, and including major Chinese tech firms, appliance makers, telecoms companies, uh, network providers, research institutes, and BYD is not just joining as a member, they're actually aiming to help lead the standards around how your vehicle and homes and people connect together digitally. So this is not about infotainment at all. It's not about nicer screens or a new voice assistant or anything like that. This is about creating a unified system where your car is just another smart device in your life much like your phone or your watch or your TV or your air conditioner and even your entire uh, your home security system. You know, it's a very, very big deal, very, very connected to your life. The idea is pretty simple to explain, but very, very complex for them to execute. Your BYD car running automotive grade Harmony OS would be able to talk directly to Harmony OS devices in your house. So as you're driving home, the car can pre-activate and also preempt your return and preactivate your air conditioning in your house, turn on the lights, heat the water, unlock the doors, even adjust things like blinds or security systems, open the gates. At the same time, from inside your house, you could monitor your car's battery state, preheat it in winter, set navigation, or check charging status, or, you know, all from basically uh, a wall mounted panel. So for example, you would be able to uh, say, can you get the car ready? I'm going to set off on a journey to, uh, I don't know, let's just imagine you're in uh, Europe and let's just say you're gonna go to a little village in the Dolomites and you wanna go via uh, Paris and you're in Calais and you wanna drive down there. You just tell it and it would just send that route to your map and then you get in your car, you walk to your car, you press go and then off you go, you just go. So that might sound like a gimmick, but the real point is standardization. Right now, the smart home world is an absolute mess. It's kind of all to playful for these big companies. They're probably all a bit sort of like fretting around and, and pretty keen to get in there. I would imagine companies such as Xiaomi have this very, very covered. I personally own quite a lot of their products and they are almost all faultless. Different apps, different protocols, nothing talks to each other. Uh, you know, properly. So if you just kind of stick with one brand, that's I think what they want and probably what you should aim for, to be honest. And BYD and Huawei are trying to flatten that mess into one common system with agreed rules, shared data formats and consistent interfaces. What I think is interesting is that they're actually also pushing into AI agent level collaboration. That's their wording, not mine. And the idea is really that instead of you manually telling every device what to do, the system learns patterns. So if you normally leave work at 5.30 in the morning, have a have a wee at you know, 6 or 5.20 or something like that, it will you know, theoretically know. And uh, 
the house starts preparing itself automatically when the car sets off. And if the car detects a low battery or a fault, the home system can notify you or adjust charging behavior and then tell you. And then there's also the security aspect of this as well, which is, I think, uh, being underreported. They're talking about two-way communication between vehicle safety systems and home safety systems. So you can kind of imagine your car detects a break-in attempt or your or abnormal movement and your home security system gets notified or your home system detects something wrong and flags it into your phone uh, through the car basically while you're driving. So it becomes one continuous safety network rather than separate systems. BYD and Huawei are also planning physical demonstration spaces, basically big fancy showrooms where you can kind of go and experience this human vehicle home setup in real life. You walk in, you can buy a car, you can buy an appliance, you can see them all working together in front of you. And it's kind of, um, it's, it's ecosystem lock-in basically. And China is very, very good at that. And it will be very hard to get out of, I should imagine. It is gonna be every, not to everyone's taste, I don't think. But uh, yeah, now here is where I think this actually matters globally. So for, for you know, just, just if you think about how we live our lives in um, Australia, America, Europe, we are not really used to that sort of thing yet. We've barely even begun thinking about it. They, I'm pretty sure they are thinking about that stuff already in China. Tesla has its own ecosystem, but it's relatively closed and focused mainly on their uh, car and energy products. Apple wants to own the interface layer but it doesn't want to make the cars google want to own the software but not have the not the hardware what byd and huawei are doing is is kind of vertical integration at a societal scale it, we've never seen this it's, it's imponderably large cars batteries phones routers appliances cloud services uh, data storage ai all under one technical framework and they kind of want to just create it rather than try to join forces with too many people, just one or two companies and they can lock it all in. And this is working in their, their vehicle uh, network at the minute. If you look at BYD, completely uh, vert vertically integrated and it just seemingly works brilliantly when you consider uh, how it is all set up in say America or Europe or Australia. And we have uh, legacy companies trying to then mutate their uh, kind of old business models into this new um, format where they're kind of mimicking and trying to parrot Chinese companies and do the things and say the things that they're doing. It's really hard and very expensive and just an inefficient way of doing things. So I think that's what they're trying to do here. This also explains why legacy automakers are struggling, such as Volkswagen, Toyota, Ford. They're still thinking in terms of vehicles as standalone products. BYD is treating the car as a node in a much bigger system and once consumers get used to that level of integration it's going to be very very hard to go back i i think so there's also a geopolitical angle here whether people like it or not i think you kind of have to mention it harmony os exists largely because huawei was pushed out of android and western ecosystems instead of collapsing they built their own so it's a uh, well psh well done to them, I would imagine. But now that ecosystem is spreading into cars, homes, factories, infrastructure, how we generate energy, how we consume energy and uh, cloud network, everything, really, AI, everything. BYD joining this formally means that China is uh, kind of aligning its largest EV manufacturer with its most strategically important software platform. Does this mean your BYD in Australia will suddenly control your kettle next year when you go through the door? No, I don't think so. I, don't, I really don't think so. But it does tell you where the long-term direction is heading. China is building a parallel tech stack. That's, the, that's how you're supposed to explain these sorts of things, by the way. It sounds a bit weird. That doesn't rely on Apple or Google or Western standards bodies. And they're doing it really, really fast. And there's a risk, of course. And uh, I would say centralized ecosystems raise privacy questions. This is now starting to come in the media. And, uh, but if the wrong people can then start to control the media and stop people talking about those questions and privacy concerns, then this is becoming something very concerning. So they raised uh, data control questions. They make it harder for smaller players to compete or even enter the space. But from a pure execution standpoint, this is exactly how China scaled solar and batteries and EVs so quickly. So set the standards very, very early force compatibility and then scale brutally and just do not stop and play that 10, 20 year game. 
So when you hear BYD and Huawei connect cars and homes, think about control over data and think about behavior, think about purchasing decisions, think about what, where is your privacy coming from after that? I think that's the sort of thing we should be thinking about. And long-term loyalty as well. This is something that they will try to um, force upon you. I would imagine. From what I've heard, that's what some people are saying. So this is about who owns the operating system of daily life in an electric future. It's, it's very complex. If you've got anything to say, just if you think it's going to be interesting to someone, just write that in the comments and then we can all read it because huge amounts of people just read the comments before I get even get to them. So really, really curious to think, uh, to read what you've got to say. Do you like the idea of your car and home being tightly integrated and, uh, you know, some large company having the AI uh, robots do all their wizard stuff and read your data and assess where you're going when you've, when you've got home and that sort of stuff? Are you all right with that? Do you think there's a good version of that? Do you think that's uh, something we wish we should be wanting to fend off or should we embrace it? I, I'm very, very curious to know what uh, people have got to say. Do you think Western automakers are underestimating how powerful this kind of ecosystem play actually is? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Really uh, keen to see what you've got to say. I read literally every single comment even the bad ones, but I almost never get any bad ones. I think it's like 98% of my comments, I would say, are pleasant and people just having a chitty chat in the, in the comments. So really appreciate your time. Thank you again to all the channel members and all the people that bought me a coffee. Honestly, genuinely thrilled with that. So thank you so much.